All right, so the next thing we want to do is determine the influence line for the internal shear at point E. And that means we've got to draw the structure with the action removed. And when we want to draw the structure with the internal shear removed, we still have to be able to transfer moments and axial forces across point E here, which means that I have a moment roller, if you will. That's what I like to call it. So I'm going to add some wheels here. That's going to allow point E to kind of go up and down. I'm at a block here. And this will allow the moment transfer and the axial force transfer. And then next, we want to introduce the unit displacement associated with this action and then draw the deflected shape. And an important factor in which way goes up and down is the internal positive sign convention that you use for shear. What's typically done is when you make a cut of a beam or some sort of member, the internal shear on the left side of the cut is downwards, positive upwards on the right, and this would be my, my sign convention for internal positive shear. And what that tells me is that the left side here is going to go down and the right side is going to go up. The relative distance between these two ends should be equal to one or a unit displacement. So let's go ahead and draw that deflected shape. So here's what my deflected shape will look like. These distances are actually pretty important to me. I'll call this one y2, this one y1, and I will call this one y3. And the thing to note here in this deflective shape diagram is that this slope and this slope are the same, which makes this slope the same too. And that means this angle and this angle and this angle, they're also the same. So this is theta, theta, theta. And we can go ahead and calculate these y1s and y2s and y3s using geometry. And there's a couple ways to do it. If I were able to continue this line, and because the slopes are the same, I know that this distance here, this would be 1. I can go ahead and use similar triangles, which tells me that y1 over 4 meters is equal to 1 over 10 meters, and that tells me y1 is equal to 0 0.4. Then I could use similar triangles, which also tells me that y1 over 4 meters is equal to y2 over 6 meters, which tells me that y2 is equal to 0.6. That's one way to do it. Another way I could have determined y2 is knowing that y1 plus y2 is equal to 1. And that would have also told, told me that y2 is equal to 0 0.6. And with that being said, I can go ahead and determine y3 as well, this value y3. Because these angles are the same, I can go ahead and use similar triangles, which tells me that y2 over 6 meters is equal to y3 over 7.5 meters. And that that tells me that y3 is 0 0.75. Also, I could have just compared everything to this 1 to 10 ratio and calculated everything out. Whatever is easier, whatever works for you, this is all that was just in my head, so I, I, I did it that way. So now I want to replot the influence line in a nice clean graph. And this plot is the influence line for a for the internal shear at E for a concentrated load pointing downwards moving across the beam. 